Hola, buenos dias. Good morning, my beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for stopping by and joining me for yet another planning video. I hope you're doing well. I hope your family is doing well. I hope you're staying healthy, you're staying blessed. And I'm just sending you so much good energy right now. So I hope you're just soaking it up and I'm wishing you nothing but the best. So I just wanna give a big thank you and shout out to all of those who um, enjoyed my last video, which was the five things to do in your planner besides plan. I got a lot of support for that video and it was very different from what I had done previously. So I thought I'd do another similar video to see if you all enjoyed this video as much as the last one. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing six things to do to help you get out of a planner rut. Um, I felt like that would be a fun topic to discuss. So if you're interested in hearing what I have to share, just keep on watching. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about planner rut planner fatigue, planner block, call it what you want to call it, but it's that feeling you get when you are inspired, you are not motivated, you don't want to be in your planner, you're kind of feeling like your planner is a chore, you're kind of done with your planner, you feel kind of like a drag when it comes to your planner. So first of all, we all get planner rut, planner block, call it what you will. That sinking feeling in your stomach when you don't feel inspired, you don't feel motivated. We all get it. Everyone in the planner community gets it. Um, let's normalize that first and foremost. And there's nothing wrong with you or your planner. It's just sometimes we get into those moods, you know? It's very, very natural, very normal. It's part of the creative process. We can't always be burned burning fires of creativity 100% of the time. It's just not the way the natural world works. So first of all, just let go of that breath, that tension you're holding and uh, be a little bit kinder to yourself when those moments happen. It's very normal, very natural. You'll get back onto the creativity train, no worries. Just let yourself relax. Don't beat yourself up over the fact that you have planner block, um, planner rut, and it will pass like all things do. So a little bit about me and my planning style. I am super extra. I am the planning diva you already know. So I joined the planner community maybe a year ago at this point, maybe a little less. So I'm a baby when it comes to planning, but I am the type of personality that when I discover something that I love, I get really, really, really into it for a time. And then I kind of draw back. I, I don't get tired of it per se, but I kind of uh, reach a more of a balance with it. And so right now I'm definitely in the honeymoon phase when it comes to planning. I am enjoying the planning world. Right now a lot of my hobbies kind of center around planning and that's totally fine, but I can definitely see myself in two, three years kind of taking a little bit of a slower approach to planning. But right now I have two mega happy planners and if you have been tuning into my channel you know that I like to do flip throughs of both of these bad boys Miss Andromeda and Miss Cassiopeia um, they're my happy planner solar systems because they're just very expansive I have 15 different happy planners in these two mega happy planners I have eight in Andromeda and seven in Cassiopeia and I love them and I adore them and they are my babies um, will I always have 15 planners probably not right now I have 15 planners because I've just discovered planning and I'm really really enjoying the art form the creativity that I can um, explore within these planners uh, I don't think I will ever stop planning I'll probably always have a happy planner on my desk but I probably won't have 15 at a time for the rest of my life Anyways, I just wanted to share that with you so that you know my planner personality, my planning style, and you know, you have an idea of who I am and where these ideas come from. So let's get into the topic of the video, which is six ideas to get out of a planner rut. 
I do get into planner ruts once in a while, not very often, but I do get into them once in a while where I just kind of feel like not motivated, not inspired. Um, planning to me like doesn't give me that same joy that it usually gives me. It seems kind of like a chore to me. I feel kind of bored or I feel kind of boring with my planner style. And um, I definitely am able to get out of that planner rut pretty quickly and I felt like these things that I'm about to share with you help me get out of my planner rut and back into my creative frenzy. So the first thing to do to get out of a planner rut is plan in a new space. So what I mean by that is switch up where you usually plan and change the environment, change the style, change the context in which you're planning. So if you always plan at your desk in the corner of your room or facing a particular wall or if you're in the same exact space planning every single one of your spreads, get out of that space. So this is kind of true of of anything, um, just changing up your environment really helps you uh, rekindle that creative energy, those creative juices, gets them flowing again. So just change up your location. I like bringing my planner camping when I go camping and I love just sitting at the campsite in my lawn chair and just having my little lap desk and just planning out in nature. Sometimes I bring my planner to the beach and I'll be at the beach for a couple of hours just sitting in front of the ocean, like seeing everyone pass by, the beach vibes, and I just have my planner with my little lap desk. And sometimes I just go out here into the backyard. I usually um, plan at my desk um, inside my house and I really enjoy my desk because it has all of my crafting supplies. But sometimes I do feel like I spend a lot of time at my desk, particularly because I also use that desk for work. So I just go outside to my backyard. I have a table out here. I'll sit out here and I'll just plan out here. And uh, particularly, I recommend going outside if you can to change up your space because it's always important to get outside, get some sun, get some fresh air. So might as well kill two birds with one stone kind of deal. And that always helps me like get out of my planner funk, my planner mood, because I mean, just being outside in a beautiful location also helps with your mood. And so um, I feel like that also helps with like inspiration and motivation because a lot of the times um, I feel like planner rut comes from things outside of your planner, you know, world. It's not necessarily that you are like unmotivated by your planner. It's more like you're unmotivated because maybe you have too much stress right now at work. You have other things occupying your mind. It's kind of like external influences influencing your, uh, your mood and that leaks, leaches out into your hobbies and all other things in your life. So get outside, change up your space, re-motivate yourself. Um, it really does help. So idea number two to get out of a planner rut is to plan it with a buddy. So if you're lucky enough to have a planner babe in your life, get together with that friend and spend some time together um, decorating, planning out your agenda. This is always an activity that people feel like they have to do alone or it's a very individual activity, a very solitary activity. And while that is more often true than not, it doesn't have to always be solitary. So um, if you're lucky enough to have someone in your life that you can go visit and hang out with and plan together, that is definitely always um, a motivating force because it's it's just really nice to sit down with someone and be creative together. You get ideas from them and you also just kind of get accountability to complete what you need to complete. So whether that be, you know, hopping on Zoom with a buddy, actually going over to someone's house and doing that with them, or even just turning on a plan with me on YouTube and planning along with someone on YouTube, all these things definitely help um, motivate and inspire you. And also, again, it's another multifunctional thing to do. It's not just planning, it's you're also socializing, you're catching up, you're having a good time. So it's, it's, a, it's a win win all around. So get yourself a planner, babe, buddy, and get to planning with them.
So idea number three to get out of a planner rut is to pick a theme and go with it. So a lot of the times I feel like I just sit down without a particular idea in mind and I just let myself, you know, explore whatever I want to explore. And while I'm pretty good at just being able to be creative um, on a blank slate, I sometimes struggle with it and so for me what helps is to pick a theme, pick an idea, and then just go with it. So whether that be, you know, picking a color scheme. So in for that example, um, let's go to, let's see, oh you know what, I actually don't have those pages in here because I just switched out all of my months. Okay, let me see if I have an example, um, this one, I just did this plan with me here. But I had the idea in my mind to do jasmine with a jungle vibe theme and so I went ahead, grabbed my supplies, grabbed my materials, I had this idea in my mind and I went for it. So just before you get to that blank page, um, have an idea in your mind about what you want to do, whether that be like a color palette, whether that be you want to use these two washi tapes, whether you want to have a theme, whether that be pirates, whether that be plants, whether that be fruit, just pick a theme and just go with that theme. And it really helps give you like a guideline and like, you know, um, just just an idea that you can go off of idea number four is flirt with mixed media so mixed media is an artistic term where you use various types of artistic tools to create your masterpiece so that means using pens markers stickers you're using more than one medium and Planning usually is mixed media because you're using stickers, you're using washi tape, you're using pen, pencil, um, you might even be using color pencil. Um, I've seen people use stamps, I've seen people use distress ink. So it's usually it usually is mixed media, but if you're someone who doesn't really use mixed media, let's say you just stick to stickers, um, go ahead and find another element to incorporate into your planner. And I think the easier ones to go with are uh, scrapbook paper, washi tape, stamps, but incorporate those into your planner and um, just having something new to play with really inspires and motivates and gets you thinking, uh, gets, you, gets those gears moving again in your head as you explore something new. So add one or two elements that are different than what you normally use. So if you just use stickers and washi, add some stamps in there, add some distress inks, add some scrapbook paper, you know, add photos, add, you know, whatever you wanna add in there uh, to to really uh, just get you thinking again. So I have some examples here. I use a lot of photos in my spreads because I just love how you know how that looks, the personal touch it gives your planner. I also use scrapbook paper. Clearly, I use stickers, um, markers, pen. I also use like little uh, paper tchotchkes, little scraps of paper. I am a pack rat. I like hoarding a lot of like paper things, and so little you know paper things, whether that be sticky notes, uh, fortune cookie, like scraps of paper. I will put them into my planner and. Um, so you can see here, I have a very mixed media style when it comes to planning. I use washi tape, I use stickers, I use stamps, and just using various media um, is, is really exciting. And so if you are in a planner rut, just pick a medium you haven't used or pick one or two mediums you haven't used before and incorporate them into your arsenal of planning and see what happens. The fifth thing that I want to talk about, the fifth thing to do to get out of a planner rut is don't plan. Okay, so what I mean by this is just take a break, take a week off, take two weeks off, take, you know, a number of days off. If you're in your planner and planning every single day, just take a number of days off off and just commit yourself to not planning in your planner for a couple of days for a stretch of time and just leave those pages blank 
because um, sometimes the best thing to do is to not fight that planner rut and totally embrace it. We get into moods where we feel like we always have to be planning, we have to be decorating, we have to be really getting the most use out of our planners and making them the most beautiful, the cutest, the most innovative. And sometimes we just don't need to be in our planners. We need to be out in the world. We need to be actually, you know, seeing the world as it is and not in our planners. So I tend to take planner breaks uh, every so often just because I like will be doing things that require me to be outside of my planner. Like for example, I went backpacking, could not take my planner along with me. So I was forced into a planner break. And sometimes I just get so busy that I just am forced into a planner break because I just don't have time to be in my planner and honestly i think those planner breaks do help me out because i end up missing my planner i miss my planner i want to be in it i think about planning in it i think about what kind of spreads i want to do and it just kind of like gives me a break so that i can come back refreshed renewed rejuvenated and i'm happy to be back in my planner i don't feel like it's a chore i don't feel like it's boring or i'm bored with it so just giving myself a planner break helps me to um, to like prime the pump of my creative juices and refresh myself. So that's the fifth thing to do if you're in a planner rut is to just take a break, don't fight it, embrace it, do something else, and then get back to your planner after some time and then revisit how you feel. So the sixth idea, the sixth and last idea I have to get out of a planner rut is to cheat on your old faithful. So, so that's not as bad as it sounds. So basically what I mean by that is to take something that you normally do, that you are very traditional about, that you do almost every single planner spread and change it up and do something completely new and different. So for example, if you always put washi, um, the same washi tape on the spine of your planner, don't do that. Do something else. Don't put washi or maybe put a different washi um, and just change it up. Do Take something that you always do and don't do it. So for example, if you always use florals in your spread, don't use florals in a new spread. Use something else and see how that goes. Something that I changed up recently was in my fitness planner. Um, I used to write my goals on the sidebar over here like every single week and I just kind of got tired of that and I decided to use a hydration tracker instead on the side here. And I've been really, really loving that. So that's an example of um, cheating on your old faithful. So the idea behind this last one is to force yourself to change something that you always do and hopefully changing that something um, inspires you, motivates you, like puts you on a new track and you don't feel bored with what you're doing anymore. And sometimes we really have to force ourselves to get out of that comfort zone because the comfort zone really can get boring sometimes if you're always doing the same thing and you're not challenging yourself, you're not pushing yourself to go beyond what you're used to doing. So if you're used to doing something, um, just force yourself to stop doing it and see if that helps you get out of your planner rut. All right, everyone, those were my ideas. I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble about planner things. Uh, let me know uh, how you get out of your planner rut in the comments down below. I would love to hear and I'm sure other people would love to hear your advice as well. Again, thank you so much for checking out this video and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye!